So glycemic index is a means that scientists came up with to try to grade food based on how much sugar they spike in your blood. That's why it's called glycemic index. It's an index of how much it spikes blood glucose level. So by definition, it represents the degree and duration that a particular food increases glycemia. It is determined by calculating the area under the curve for blood glucose during the two-hour period subsequent to the ingestion of a particular type of food that provides 50 grams of digestible carbohydrate. So how does that, how, in other words, if I want to know a glycemic index for a particular food, let's say we are going to use banana. So what do I do? I take a portion of banana that contains 50 grams of carbohydrate in it. You eat that, we measure blood glucose before you eat, then you eat, and then within a two hour period, we are gonna do several blood measurements to see how your blood glucose levels behave. So that will give us like a, a graph. And then we can calculate the area under the, this, the curve that you're gonna get. And that gives you a value that is used for that represents the glycemic index. And this has been measured for thousands of different foods already. It's time consuming, but it's, uh, it's been done several times. So I just brought here the common foods that people usually eat. So to give us an idea of how much sugar, or what is the glycemic index, or what's the response of your body to this food? So what we have in the y-axis, we have the glycemic index, and this is in percentage, the 0 to 130. So say, what, what, what do you mean by percentage? Well, how do we know if something is high or low? You have to have a reference. So what's the reference? The reference is used usually either bread, white bread, or sucrose, table sugar. So what you do is, you do the same experiment with 50 grams of carbohydrate, but in the form of bread. And you look at the response. Because we know that bread and sugar, these are the ones that have the highest available carbohydrate that you can get. So those are the references. So these values here, they are measured against bread or sucrose. Which means that if it's 100, means that it's the same as bread or sucrose. If it's higher than 100, it's 130%, for instance, means that it's beyond what you see with bread or sugar by that amount in percentage. All right? So look at here. So if you eat an apple, an apple will put you in the, so we have high, medium, and low, three classifications. So if you eat an apple or 50 grams of apple, it's going to throw you in the medium range. So it's going to spike. It's going to be less than what you usually, 60%, 60 to 70% what, what you see if you were to eat bread or table sugar. Now look at if you eat a bagel. It goes way over it. So it's very, the glycemic response is high. A banana is also classified within the high Lower, obviously, than what you should get with sugar and bread, but it's still in the high range. Cheerios, this cereal that people eat all the time, especially for breakfast, look at that. It's actually a huge response in your spike in your blood glucose levels. Corn flakes, even worse. It's actually this is slightly less than Coca-Cola. So you people say, oh, Coca-Cola, you don't drink Coca, but you then and you go and eat Cheerios and cornflakes. Really? If that's what you're looking at, at the glycemic response, French fries, another popular one. Lentils. Uh, lentils. Yeah, yeah, that's the low one. Because there's quite a bit of fiber too in lentils. Orange, 
is like medium borderline high. Pizza. Popcorn. Potato. If you bake it. Rice. Spaghetti. And this is table sugar. So just to give you a, a feeling or a, an idea, when you look, when you, the choices that you make of the foods that you eat can drive a big or less or higher or lower glycemic response. Think of that today when you are having lunch.